Hey guys, Bill coming back at you again with another video. Today we're going to be taking a look at some new plants that I have going and doing a little bit of training on them. Okay guys, so I have a few different types of photo periods going in my two and a half by five foot tent. And today I'm going to be pulling a few of them out and doing some topping and defoliation. Let's take a look. Okay guys, so there they are there. They're in my two and a half by five foot tent. And uh, they're under two Mars Hydro SP250s. Uh, doing a great job at filling the tent. Almost, almost overkill actually, but uh, that's fine. Okay, so here we have my new plants. Now the ones in the center are about three and a half weeks and the ones on the outside are about four and a half weeks so quite a bit of difference there in the uh, in one week's growth so anyway let's talk about these a little bit on this side this one and this one now these are feminized king tot photo periods from canuck seeds uh, i purchased them through true north seed bank i'll leave a uh, link in the description for those if you want to check them out and then if we go to, we'll skip those two. If we go to this one and this one, these are Violator Kush regular photo periods. These are a week behind the bigger ones. So there's a 50% chance that these are male or female. So uh, this one in the back is doing well. Now on all of them, there is a few, a uh, little bit of newt burn going on on the tips, which is fine. I tend to push my plants quite a bit. Now this one out front, now you might see something a little bit different here and that's because this is a mutant so ever since it popped from the ground it grew three three leaves every time so every time it grows up instead of growing out the two leaves on either side this grows three so now being regular seed unfortunately i kind of think this may turn out to be a male because males tend to uh, mutate more than the females uh, from what I've read so anyway we'll keep an eye on that and uh, I really hope it is a female because I want to see what happens to her okay so now if we jump over we have we have this one this one and these two they are all Robert Bergman's gold leaf photo periods so again these two smaller ones are about a week behind the bigger ones yeah nice big leaves on them now this one here, again, uh, you may see something a little different here uh, besides the drooping. I guess it's kind of hard to see now, but this is a mutant too. And uh, it started out growing the three leaves, and now it's pretty much grown out of that. But uh, she, likes to, uh, she likes to sag down there pretty good. Uh, no matter how much I water or feed her, she, she doesn't seem to like to, to lift her leaves up too much. So uh, I'm a assuming it's because of being a mutant she may just be finicky compared to the rest of them but uh, yeah so if you come in here you can see instead of the traditional just one stem off of each side we got one here we have one here and there's one right around the back and then it, after that up here it just starts to grow out normally one on either side so what i might do with this is I was thinking maybe of cutting it off down here with those three shoots coming out and just top it right there and then possibly doing like a main line or something with it. So uh, that might be something to do just for an experiment. Um, either that or I could just chuck it out and plant a new one or I could just let it go as is. This. Do you want me to cut it off there and main line the, the, three, the three stems coming out there? at the second node do you want me to let it go and just let it do its thing or yeah that's probably the only options because i'm probably not going to throw it out because I, I find these plants interesting but uh, yeah let me know in the comment section what you think of that so and the other two gold leaf photo periods now these are fems so uh yeah they're got nice big leaves on them a little bit of newt burn but that's all right so what we're going to do today is uh, I'm just going to pull out one, probably maybe one, maybe two to do on camera. What I'm going to do is I'm going to strip out some of these top leaves. I'm going to take off some of these that are covering all these beautiful bud sites underneath here. And um, I'm going to 
strip these off and then I'm going to top the plant. I'm going to top it once and I'm going to top that one once and those two once. Now by doing that I'm hoping it will slow down the upward growth a little bit uh, just to give these guys a little bit more time to catch up. Now these are in three gallon fabric pots. Now the reason I put them in three gallons was because my initial plan was to have eight in here, flip them when they were three to four weeks and put a scrog net over top and let them grow up that way. Now things have changed a little bit. I have a bigger grow area coming in a couple of weeks. So I think what I'll do is just let them veg out till it gets here and see where they're at at that stage. Now for doing that, I would rather these be in five or seven gallon pots, but right now it's hard to get things from Amazon here. Normally with Prime, it would take me four to five days to get new fabric pots. And right now they're saying it could be up to 30 days for non-essential items. And I guess they're non-essential. Anyway, I'm gonna get started here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull one of these out. I will set you guys up on the tripod and I will just do a little bit of training. It's, it's not gonna be anything complicated, uh, just a, a little defoliation and some topping. So uh, I'll set you guys up and get at it. Okay guys, so pulled one out. This is one of the King Tuts, one of the feminized King Tuts. And uh, we're just gonna get right in here and start cleaning it out. So what I'm going to do is just look through here and cut out any big leaves that are covering stuff. Now look, this one here, beautiful leaf. It's covering all this area down in here. So she gone. Now on the other side, the exact opposite side, same thing, same situation underneath. She gone. And I'm even going to take off these two top ones here because they're covering a lot of stuff down here. Okay. And again, on the opposite side of this one, we're going to take this. Okay. And pretty much anything. This one's flipped over for some reason. Might have been up against the side of the tent. So it hasn't been used in that anyway. Because upside down they do nothing. Okay. One down here. Take this one off. I'm going to take this one off. I'm going to take this one off. I did notice when they were younger, I'll show you here, there's a piece here, a couple of spots here, which could be a number of things. What I assume that is, is in another tent just in the other room, I started growing some vegetables uh, just because I wanted to and I wanted to try it. Now, one thing with the vegetables is, well, I planted a cucumber. Now, cucumbers are very susceptible to yellow leaf spot otherwise known as septoria so i kind of wonder if that may be and that's a, a type of fungus that can get on the leaves and cannabis is susceptible to that too so so anytime i see these right now and i notice it's not spreading now it's just on a couple of the lower ones a couple of the older ones but i'm cutting anything out that has any spot on it like that because if it is a fungus i do not want it to spread now, in order to, uh, to help that out, I bought this uh, at my local feed store, farm store, uh, Green Earth Ready to Use Garden Fungus. So I just been using that. I gave it a couple of doses of that, the whole, the whole tent, sprayed the whole tent with it. It doesn't say yellow leaf spot or leaf septoria on the back, but it, all, it does say uh, powdery mildew, rust, black spot, scab, and certain mites. So... Uh, I assume that would probably work for that too. So I've given a couple of sprays of that and let that set on there. Um, you can see on the pictures actually quite similar to what I just showed you there. So uh, that seems to be working. I haven't seen it. I haven't seen it uh, spreading anymore since I sprayed that. So that is good. 
So one thing to learn from that is if you have other plants that have a disease, a fungus, then you want to get rid of that plant or at least treat it right away so it doesn't affect your other plants. It's kind of a shame when I think that a cucumber plant could have ruined my whole crop of cannabis if I hadn't caught it earlier. Okay, so that looks pretty good. Now we still have these really big, nice, uh, that one's bent up because it was against the wall, but we have these really nice leaves here that, uh, and these ones that are still going to give it lots of leaf area to do its photosynthesis. So taking off those few top leaves are not going to bother it too much. Okay, now I'm going to top this, this girl here. Now how you top a plant, most of you probably already know, but if you don't, what you do is, now usually you wait till you have three to four nodes before you do this, and it's a nice healthy plant. This is pretty healthy, so I'm quite comfortable doing this now. So uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna see if I can bring you in here closer. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come in here. Now you can see we have a node here where we have two small shoots coming out either side. And then we have this main, this is the main top. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna cut it right at this node here. So you can use your fingernails, but you can also use your clippers. I'm gonna use clippers just to make it a nice clean cut. So I'm gonna come in here. I'm gonna not bother the two on the side. I'm gonna come right in beside those and cut that top off, okay? So that is, that is how you top your cannabis. So now with those leaves gone at the very top and cutting off that main top, it should st stunt just for a little bit the upward growth and it should put that energy down into these bottom, these lower bud sites here and let them come up a little bit. And, and then at that point, this will start growing again and they should be at a pretty even level at that point. So that uh, looks pretty good. Now, I do think that uh, I am going to come underneath of the plant here just to take a look down here. And I'm going to cut off any low branches. Uh, I call them suckers or clones. You can call it a clone because you can definitely make a clone out of that. Um, but basically just going to clean up down below here so we don't have energy going into that. And we can let all that energy go up into the top. So basically just a, just a quick haircut, just of the lowest of the low. I'm leaving some of the, the higher ones for right now, but, but like if you can see on, let's see here. If you can see on this branch here, we have a node here with two, bran two branches on either side down here, and then here, and then here, and then your top. So I'm just basically, I'm just going to take those bottom two out. Just pop them out and leave the rest for now. Okay, so that looks pretty good, pretty easy. Didn't take too much out of it. But now it opens it up, lets that light down in there, hitting all these other buds. And now we'll get a two fresh tops coming out here and also very important cannot stress this enough you need lots of air movement in here now i consider air movement um, airflow just as important as your lights or your humidity or your temperature because if you do not have airflow in here it's not going to grow you big buds so very important make sure you have lots of fans circulating air in there make sure when the fans are on that you're your plants moving like this maybe not constantly even though constantly doesn't hurt them unless it's directly on it but you want them moving you want them to strengthen that stem up for one and all these stems if they're moving they're getting stronger but also you want the air to get in there so the plant says hey pollen can travel in this air so we're going to grow a bud here and here and here instead of just growing the buds on the very outside so uh, it really will increase your yield if you have lots of airflow. Okay, guys, so that's it for this one. Now, I might grab another one here. I might grab one of the uh, gold leaves and do that too while I got it out here just to show you. 
Okay, so we have one of the uh, Bergman Gold Leafs here, and we're going to do the same thing with this one. Uh, nice, nice, strong, healthy leaves. Now, I'm sure if I look at the bottom, we can find a little bit of this here. Again, I'm, I'm uh, thinking that is yellow leaf spot, which it's sprayed for, and it hasn't spread for for about a week now so uh, very happy about that so basically we're gonna do the same thing with this we're gonna lift these leaves up take a look see this nice beautiful bud here this bud site and there's another bud site here but that's all being covered by this so we're gonna pick that one off same thing on the other side see how much already we've got these really nice nice colored bud sites all exposed now now this one is not really covering much of anything but this is so we're going to cut that we're going to cut that and perhaps this one this one this one now if it's not covered anything it doesn't need to come off now this big leaf here actually has some spot on that too from before it is covering this uh, bud site down here so we're gonna take this one off now this one on this side is not covering there's nothing underneath of that one so there is one off to the side here But I think that'll be fine. And those bottom ones might not be staying anyway. We'll just let them go for now. Okay, so now we're going to do the same thing. We're going to top this one. So you see the, uh, see the node here with the two nice healthy tops here. We're just going to go ahead. Now I could go higher if I wanted to spread that out. I could go in a little bit higher. But one of the reasons I'm doing this is to kind of keep it a little bit shorter to let the other ones grow up anyway so I'm gonna pinch it right there and there you go and it's always good when you top to leave a bit of as much of the stem there as you can because when you have a two tops coming out here they'll grow up this way and if you want to pull them out and flatten them out if you cut right down to the right down to the V there sometimes it'll be more apt to split apart there if you leave a little bit there that will that will die off it seems to strengthen that area there so they're less apt to snap when you pull them apart if you pull them apart so so that's it for that one some nice leaves on there to continue photosynthesis and uh that's it okay so we've got two of them done let's take a look here and compare with the other ones so there's a lot more bud sites that you can see here compared to this one this one you can only see a few the leaves are covering the rest and the same with the Bergman's gold leaf you can see lots of bud sites there and up here you can only see a few so so I'm going to pull out those other ones off camera and I'm going to do the same thing with those and let these guys grow up a little bit till they get to the same size and by then I should have my new bigger tent and they can move into there and go into flower Okay guys, man, I'm sweating. Working underneath those lights is pretty warm work. So uh, anyway, we got two done. I'll finish the other two up here quickly and put them back in the tent. We'll come back in another week. We'll check up on these guys. And then we'll also check up on the auto flowers that I have going in the other tent. I'll put links in the description there of True North Seed Bank where I got the King Tuts. And I'll put a link down there too for uh, ilovegrowingmarijuana.com where I got my Bergman's Gold Leaf, uh, Photo Period, and Auto Flower. And then I will try to find out the Violator Kush. I'll try to find out where they came from. And if I can find that out, I'll put a link for them too. So, so that's it for now, guys. Um, like, share, subscribe. Leave a comment down below. And we'll see you on the next one. Happy growing.